Hello, welcome back to the Evergreen RX. I'm your host, Hayden, licensed mental health therapist, Cancer Moon, and the first to get deep at any party. And this is the last main dose of season two. Woohoo! We've got one more mini dose coming after this, and then I'm going to take a short little break. Um, probably like a month, and then we'll be back at it with more incredible guests and fun topics and all of that. So this is like a cute little um, time moment to celebrate um, everything in this past season and to round it out with, I think, what will be a fun episode for you guys about relationship green flags. If I know anything about you guys so far, um, you listeners, is that you guys really like talking about dating and relationships. I mean, what's the big surprise if many of us are in our 20s, 30s, um, relationships, it's a huge part of this period of time uh, and dating and marriage and commitment and partnership and blah, 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 blah. It's all a really big deal. So I like to talk about it luckily and you guys like to listen. So I've got more of that today. I decided to kind of flip the normal dating conversation these days about red flags in relationships and flip it to the positive, looking at green flags, because I think that that is really important and often very overlooked. Uh, We've gotten into this whole weird space of having a huge amount of options when it comes to dating through dating apps and Um, things like that and so now people are being more critical about what they're looking for in relationships and yes the essence of that is great and there's also sometimes a darker side to that so before getting too ahead of myself um, I want to kind of start off by talking about the green flags later in this episode I'm going to touch a little bit more on red flags and where we might be going a little bit wrong um with those and also we'll talk about some relationship deal breakers as well you know I want this episode to focus more on the positives in relationship but I think that there's still some other parts to cover so I'm going to be sure to do that um and yeah okay so why green flags over red flags um I wanted to talk about green flags in particular because I think it can be really important to prize the positive, um, especially when it comes to looking for a relationship, which in this episode I'm primarily talking about in dating, but use relationship as you may. We're talking friendships. This stuff can apply to, um, you know, I think in the future, maybe I'll do an episode more um, focusing on the friendship side of things because I think all of these intentions that we apply to dating how much people talk about it how much people think about it going in and having you know these direct conversations with partners um thinking about the green flags thinking about what you want or don't want out of a relationship it doesn't always get translated as much to other relationships and I think that's a real shame because all relationships carry their own challenges their own growth points um their own intimacy and depth and connection. We need so many different relationships in our life. And I really think that we should be intentional in all of them. Um, So you can take this and apply it to all your relationships. Uh, For the most part, I don't really think there's going to be anything that wouldn't apply. Um, But for the sake of the conversation, I am going to be leaning a little bit more into romance. So just to let you know. So yeah, Green flags. This is prizing the positive, looking at what it is that we want instead of what we don't want. Because, you know, you can take this from the most practical, pragmatic stance or really going some spiritual directions with it. Um, And it still applies that looking at the positive usually gets us closer to what we want. Because, you know, on the practical side, thinking about, you know, all these things that you don't want. It's a little bit harder when something you do want comes around and you don't even know exactly what you are looking for. You're just keeping your eye out, scanning for all of the unwanted things. Um, And on the spiritual side, if we're thinking like manifestation or attraction, law of attraction, things like that, uh, you know, the universe doesn't work in negatives. The universe doesn't work with don't, not, things like that. We really bring in and call in the things that we are asking for directly. So instead of saying something like someone that won't gaslight me and won't lie, 
we could say something like, I want someone that is honest and um, clearly communicates. I want someone who will be aligned with their word and their action. I want someone who I can trust implicitly. I want someone who deeply values honesty and being upfront in relationships. You know, you you start to see how those things sound really different and how much better it can feel in our bodies when we start saying all of the positives. You know, I've had so many conversations with friends over the years where it's like, I I don't want a guy like this. I don't want, you know, my last relationship was, you know, negative in all of these ways. And I just, you know, don't want another partner like that. Um, I don't want someone who's lazy. I don't want someone who's unmotivated. I don't want someone that, you know, will be late to every day, things like that. Uh, And it can start to feel a little bit like a bitch fest. And I don't mean that in a judgmental way. We all get into it. But, you know, talking like that versus switching the conversation and saying, I'm, I'm so excited. I really want someone. I, I'm so much more clear now. I want someone that's got drive and purpose. I want someone close with their family. I want someone loves to give back, whatever it may be. And so far, I've really been giving a lot of examples focusing on what you want in the other person. But part of what I want to have be in this conversation today is talking about what you want for the relationship too. You know, without going too far ahead, uh, one of the things with red flags that is problematic is that we're focusing a lot on the other person. What are the other person's qualities? What do they do? What do they have? What are the, da, 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 da. Whatever. There is a pl- time, there is a place for that, for sure. All these examples I'm giving, I'm talking about what you want in the other person, but also thinking about what do you want the relationship to look like? What do you want it to feel like? What are the two of you bringing to the relationship? What is the connection, the union bringing to the relationship you know that is what it means to be in relationship is to not be you and me but to be us and what does it look like when you have an us mentality so this also means that we're going to be taking a hard look at ourselves as well you know turning and looking in the mirror and saying what are the qualities that I bring to the relationship what am I contributing or maybe what am I detracting through some of my behaviors in this relationship So here's my list. I came up with five green flags, which is, I mean, obviously that's, we're just barely scratching the surface. This is a starting point, but I think these are some pretty foundational um, and large green flags. So the first one, first and foremost to me is respect. I have really in the past couple of years started to lean so much more into respect and relationships and how important and foundational that is. And this is all relationships for sure. Um, But respect is just the groundwork that we build other things off of. And I mean this in the sense of like, do they respect you as just another human being deserving of good things? You know, outside of themselves, outside of yourself, do you respect each other as people trying to live the best life that they can? So... Something when you're first starting to think about respect and relationships might be um, to really look at a relationship that you have where respect is present. So if you're having a hard time thinking of a family member or a friend uh, where you feel like the relationship is very mutually respectful, expand your scope. You and a coworker, you and your therapist, you know, therapy ideally is a very respectful relationship. You respect each other's time. You show up on time. You end on time. The therapist holds that boundary as well um you want to communicate clearly and feel like uh what you're being what you're saying is being listened to and hopefully you are you know listening in return with your therapist so it doesn't just have to be you know a close intimate relationship if you're having a hard time thinking of one that's really respectful really expand your scope and I imagine that it all of you can find a relationship in your life at least one where there is respect If you're having a hard time finding one, then maybe look in the mirror. Maybe. I'm just going to say. There might be something else going on there. But start to know and notice what respect feels like and looks like for you in relationships. So that when you do start dating, it is easier to anchor into like, what does this actually look like? Because I think a lot of times people are settling for relationships 
where there is not a ton of respect and they might give the reason oh I don't know what that feels like or you know I've never had a guy that respects me or you know whatever okay that's legit that's real I'm sorry that that's happened to you and also you are going to be the only person that can require that in a relationship and for yourself if someone doesn't respect you you have to respect yourself enough to end that relationship because you can't force someone to respect you the way that we we attract more respect into our lives and we have more relationships that look like that is through respecting ourselves enough to require it so I think that is super foundational I this would look like you know someone that also values your time um, and follows through on their commitments this could look like you know This looks like someone who understands the energy and the effort that you're giving to the relationship and wants to match it um, or meet you in return. This could also look like someone that celebrates you or encourages you uh, as your own individual because they, they want the best for you. So the next one is someone who's willing to discuss the future or serious topics early on serious in quotation I don't know what how do we determine what the fuck a serious question or conversation is I think a lot of times we have these conceptions and relationships like oh talking about you know what are we or what are we looking for things like that that's that's so serious that's too you know that's got to be further down the line why why you want to give three months to someone To then be at the point where, oh, now I can broach the conversation of what are you looking for in a relationship and I find out you're actually not looking for what I'm looking for and now we just have to part ways and we've spent time together and I've gotten connected to you and so maybe we don't want to part ways even though we're not looking for the same thing. Why do that to ourselves? We can have conversations that are about the future without jumping the gun, without, you know, leaning into kind of that anxious attachment of, you know, getting too close too fast we don't have to do that but we can have a conversation that looks like hey you know I am really searching for a committed partner I'm, I'm hoping to find a longtime person to share my life with and I don't know yet I don't know you well enough I don't know you really at all to know if that's going to be you but I'm willing and I would like to you know find that out is that something that you're looking for what are you looking for you know, it's not about this person in particular. It's about what are you looking for? How serious are you about pursuing that? And if you're not willing to have the conversation because you're afraid that it's too early or they're going to get freaked out or they're going to run, that is a sign for you to say, is this my person? Is this the person that I, you know, want to pursue whatever type of connection with if I'm too afraid that they're going to run through me having just a direct clear conversation with them you know and there's there's tact and there's balance and all of that but if you have it on your heart that you're looking for something more serious or you're wanting to have these types of conversations or you're wanting to know where the person you're getting to know you know kind of falls on uh these relationship topics or topics for the future then go ahead and have the conversation you know because you might also run into someone that's like oh I've never really thought about it or I don't really know what I'm looking for I don't okay well that also is good information for you (laughs) maybe you don't want to start something with someone who doesn't know what they're looking for or hasn't really thought about it too much and I know in this you know I'm leaning more on the you know, if you're looking for commitment, my guess is if you're listening to a podcast about green flags in a relationship, you're probably dating a little bit more intentionally and not just like for fun and whatever. Um, but even still, if you're dating for fun, it is very much the mature or adult thing to do to have a conversation with someone about that. To say, hey, I'm just looking to have fun. You know, I'm just... I just want to hang out with someone. I'm not really looking for anything serious. Um, I'm just not in that stage of my life. Okay. Give the other person the autonomy, the chance to, you know, determine what they're looking for as well. To have this be a mutual, um, consensual, get to know you process. Uh, and this is this is just going back to respect. I think that is the respectful thing to do. And it's also the path that will lead to the least amount of pain 
hopefully, ideally, minimize the chances in the future as you continue down this road. So next one is shared goals, values, and activities. Do you have shared goals, values, and activities? So values, that's that's a really big one. If you don't know your values or you're wanting to learn more about it, go ahead and listen to my episode number eight on living your values to find fulfillment because values is how we make decisions. That is what we base our decision off of when you're really connected with yourself, with your internal guidance. Our decisions come out of a place of value alignment. So if you and someone else have really, really different values, that might cause some more friction and pain down the road when trying to make big life decisions or when just you know structuring your life who are the people that you want to have around you and I'm not saying any certain values are better or worse than others they're not Um, but sometimes in our really close intimate relationships we do want someone that is value aligned you know if I think that um, equality is extremely important and I you know, try to shape my life around that belief. And someone else, their most important is adventure, novelty. You know, that's not necessarily a bad connection. But depending on how those values get expressed, it could look really, really different. And our lives could end up taking us in really, really different directions. So, Knowing those values, seeing if they're aligned with somebody, seeing if you just like to do certain similar things. My God, this is like as basic as it could get. But like at the end of the day, we form relationships to be able to share our lives with people, to be able to commit and spend time together. And it's a time investment. It is a time commitment to be in a close, intimate relationship with someone. So like you might as well like to do some of the same things If that's important to you, if quality time is important to you in a relationship, which I think it's important to a lot of us, why not find someone that likes to do some similar stuff? Not that you have to change them into or convince them that they like to do something, but like maybe they could just already come liking some of the same stuff. You know, I've got some really good girlfriends who like to go to yoga. That's great because I love to go to yoga too. So when we want to hang out, we're not having a clash all the time arguing on what to do. Usually it's like, hey girl you want to go to yoga tonight? And it's like, yeah, that sounds great. I already was planning on doing that. You know, it's just adds some ease. Like why do we have to make relationships more complex and harder than they already can be in some ways? Meshing your life with someone is a complex thing. So finding someone that has shared values, shared interests and activities that can just help ease and flow and create these positive experiences with each other which are the things that really fortify us when there are challenges in relationships, when there are difficulties, when there are hard conversations. What really fortifies us is all of those positive experiences with the other person. What what are those things that you really want to share with a partner? Um, And is that other person wanting to share those same things too? So next is, are they reliable and consistent and do their actions align with their words? So this can be simple things like, are they on time? Do they follow through on the plans that they make? Um, To also, what are their other relationships look like? How are they talking about other people in their life? How do they interact with other people in their life? You know, if they treat you one way, they treat you like a princess. Oh my God, it's so great. And then everyone else you see them interact with, they're kind of a dick to. Hmm. That's not great. (laughs) So, you know, to focus on the positive, to turn to the positive, the green flag, if they treat you well, they treat you with respect, they follow through on their commitments, um, and then you see them exhibit that with other people. You know, maybe you're trying to make plans with them and they say, oh, you know, I would love to see you on Wednesday, but, you know, it, I, I already told my friend it's their birthday, I'm going to be there. Or one of my friends is moving, I'm going to help him out. So, you know, as much as I'd love to see you, I have this commitment to follow through on that's great. That is great info for you. How do they treat the people that they have relationships, pre-existing relationships with? You know, something about their words and actions being aligned too, I think is, are they willing to have clear communication? And sorry, direct and clear communication, guys, it's not sexy. Sorry. It doesn't lead to drama and fights and makeups and breakups and, um, you know, 
excitement and fear and, you know, will they, won't they, whatever. That's not the dynamic you're even going to get here. That's not the dynamic I'm ever going to promote. Sorry, everyone in my life knows this. And I know sometimes it can be boring or just sound like the, you know, annoying therapy way to go about conversations. Um, But if that is what you want, if a healthy, committed relationship, positive relationships, loving relationships, mutually respectful relationships is what you want, direct communication is how you get it. So yeah, sometimes you got to take a moment, you got to cool down, you got to blow off steam in some other way than shooting off a passive aggressive text or yelling at, you know, a friend or whatever. You got to cool it down, use some of your other tools for emotionally regulating and then have the mature conversation. And so is that happening in this relationship? Are you able to have those conversations? Do both people exhibit that ability to slow down, to pause, to take a deep breath, and to be open? And so, like I said, that those kinds of behaviors, focusing on the green flags, um, looking for mutual respect, seeing if someone's words and actions align, you know, being really um, honest with yourself about what the connection looks like and what the other person, you know, is bringing to the table what you're bringing to the table that is how you're going to form these relationships that you really desire and if you're noticing that that's really really tough or you're self-sabotaging when things are good or when you're noticing all these green flags uh listen to my mini dose number eight why i don't deserve why don't i deserve good things um because there might be something else going on there that's blocking you from really getting what you are wanting or at least saying that you want so next is it should feel easy. Now, don't get me wrong. Relationships aren't easy. They are not easy. There are places to grow, to evolve, to learn about ourselves, to have a mirror held up to us and to bump up against things and polish off the rough edges and um, to continually expand. They are opportunities for growth and that means challenge in a lot of ways. But at the beginning, especially, I would say, it should feel easy. There should be a natural harmony or sense of excitement or compatibility that's there. If it feels so unaligned from the start, I'm not saying that the relationship is doomed. I can't possibly, you know, call that. But... It can create other problems when you don't have that foundation of just fun and enjoyment. Part of what makes a relationship feel, you know, quote unquote easy is that you put effort in and they put effort in, which is what makes it effortless when you're together. And so, you know, asking yourself, do I have fun with this person? Do I like to be around them? Am I excited to see them next? So, those are my five green flags, and so now I have some caveats that I'd like to add, some additional footnotes that I think are important. I don't think this conversation would be complete without talking about them. One is to know your relationship deal breakers. This is important. Like I said at the beginning, I think we can gain a lot from prizing the positive and from focusing on what we do want, but we do need to know the things that are really no-goes for us. Um, You know, are we looking for someone that has the same religious background as as us or um, is, you know, a part of a group or an identity that's really important to us that we want in a partner? Do you want someone that's in the same geographic region as you? You know, things like that where just really getting clear on your boundaries. They don't have to be hard, firm rules. But in general, if something's super important to you and you meet someone that doesn't align on that, um, especially like foundational kind of life beliefs or um, goals in their life, you know, if they want to move to another country and that's not something that you have ever been interested in and you don't really want to get interested in it, then, you know, that's that's good information. 
And to know that you won't change someone, you're not going to foundationally change someone. You're not going to change someone at all. They, they will change and they will grow, but we don't have control over that. The pace it happens, if it happens, what they change. Um, so really being realistic with that and knowing that if there's something that you would really only want to be with this person, if it changed, then that's probably a sign that it might not be the right relationship for you. And I think that, you know, everything that I've been saying and and with this knowing your deal breakers part, you know, just knowing it's okay to have a list of wants and desires and needs in a relationship that usually is going to be the best, you know, most ethical way to spend your time and theirs when you're super clear on what kind of works for you and what doesn't. So my other little footnote uh, is looking in the mirror and seeing is the red flag you okay so that's kind of an inflammatory way to say it but this is what I've been alluding to or talking about with kind of where we go wrong with red flags we're so focused on the qualities or shortcomings or things we don't like about the other person or their behaviors that are unhealthy or you know toxic and codependent manipulative whatever people use a lot of strong words uh, that sometimes we forget to kind of look back on ourselves if we have a persistent pattern of attracting someone with certain you know unhealthy characteristics into our life I'm not saying that you are to blame for their unhealthy behaviors not at all and obviously there's a lot of um, complexity to this point but when we're consistently attracting something in our, into our life, that usually means there's some growth there for us too. There's some lessons for us to learn and some habits for us to break so that we can attract different people into our life um, that have more of the qualities we're looking for, or have maybe a healthier way of relating in relationships. I also think that searching for red flags, staying alert to all of them, is a form of self-protection. We think that we have the ability somehow that if we know all the red flags, that we'll see everything and somehow we won't be hurt. And there's just no way to guarantee that we won't be hurt in relationships. That's part of it. That's part of intimacy. That's that risk. And, you know, I hate to break it to you guys, but most likely the red flags that you're going to notice at the beginning of a relationship would not be the ones that are actually really vital. Um you probably won't see them till later. You know, the things where you you say, you know, you don't ever want to date someone like your dad and you meet someone, they seem totally different. They're checking all the boxes. The behaviors that maybe are more reminiscent of your dad or the relationship you didn't want to recreate, they'll probably appear later because this is how romance works is, uh, you know, at the beginning, everything's all great and you got the rose colored glasses on. And the real fundamental things that will challenge us to grow and to change and to heal what we're meant to heal in this life, those are going to show themselves later. So, you know, we can't always protect ourselves. We're not going to be able to predict the future. And, you know, no matter what, people are allowed to be flawed and people will be flawed. You are flawed. The person you get into a relationship with is flawed. That's just how life goes. There's no perfect person out there. You know, so thinking about kind of flipping the script and looking at potentially some of your own red flags, kind of just asking yourself the question of like, what am I bringing to the table? Do I have any unhealthy behaviors that I've identified? Do I have any kind of persistent relationship patterns? Maybe what are those patterns trying to show me or tell me about myself and areas, you know, that I could focus on? Okay. So, that's what I've got for you guys. It's time for the dose. Um, My dose for you is to create a list of green flags if you'd like. If you're feeling inspired, you can pull up your notes app on your phone and just jot down some of the things that you want in relationships. What are you looking for? What excites you um, imagining about a potential partner or friend or whoever? And maybe take a little bit of time to look in the mirror. Look at what you're bringing to that dynamic. The good things and the not so great as we're talking about don't just look in the mirror and use that as an opportunity to beat yourself up over you know maybe some of the areas you're still working on or you're healing but also look at like what am I bringing 
what makes me such a catch? Um, and spending some time focusing on all of the wonderful qualities that you have as well. So that's your dose. There is the final main episode of the season all wrapped up. Follow along because we still got a mini dose to go before I'm taking a little bit of a break and coming back um, in September around the autumn equinox, I believe. So late September. Um, But yeah, just be sure to follow along. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me wherever you listen to your podcast so that you can get updated when I post next. I promise it's not going to be too long and it's going to be jam-packed. I had great guests. I'm so grateful to all the guests that I had on the season. If you missed any of them, go back and listen. They're all such informative, interesting conversations, really cool women uh, in vastly different fields. You know, we got Shada Tarabi in the THC CBD realm. We've got uh, Des Lindsley in the gardening realm talking about how gardening heals you. We got Margot Lee talking about everything to do with technology and just being in your 20s living in the world we live in today so that's just a few of them they're so good um and I'm gonna have so many more amazing guests next season so really stay tuned for that and stay connected um I'm so grateful to each and every one of you for listening sharing rating reviewing telling your friends um it means so much to me and we just keep growing from here so Till I see you next, I wish you the best. Bye.